Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome back to the channel. So you've just taken off in the Airbus A320, the autopilot's on, and air traffic control tells you to climb via the SID. Or maybe they say climb to altitude 6,000 feet. Either way, which climb mode are you going to use? Well, if you're new to the Airbus or you've come from Boeing, where VNAV runs the show, then it can be a little bit confusing. Many new Airbus sim pilots get this wrong, and that's not because they're bad pilots, it's just because the Airbus works differently and in the video today that is exactly what we're going to unlock so you can understand which climb and which descent mode to use depending on what it is you're trying to achieve. Now, first of all, choosing the wrong mode won't crash the airplane. Well, not normally, but it can break altitude constraints. It can confuse air traffic control if you're flying with online networks like Vatsim, for example, and it can leave you asking the famous old Airbus question, what's it doing now? Well, let's go through the climb modes to begin with. So the first one we're going to look at is the managed climb mode. This is set by pressing forward on the altitude window and then the FMAs will say climb. This is perfect for when air traffic control says climb via the SID. This is fully managed. The aircraft follows the vertical profile in your flight plan. It meets all of the altitude constraints and it will then obviously level off exactly at the selected FCU altitude. So yes, this is perfect if you need to still adhere to all the constraints on your departure, the managed climb mode. Next then is open climb mode. Now let's say air traffic control have cleared you to climb to 7,000 feet, meaning you no longer need to stick to any altitude constraints that are ahead of you on your flight plan. Well, this is where we use open climb because this ignores every constraint and just basically takes you straight up to the altitude that you've got set on the FCU. Now, the rate of the climb, the vertical rate, depends on your aircraft speed. So if you are targeting a low speed, then the aircraft will climb steeper. If you are targeting a higher speed, well, in order to maintain that higher speed, the climb will be shallower. Now, the big thing to remember with this is it will ignore all altitude restrictions and constraints. So if you do have any constraints on your flight plan in your standard instrument departure, this is just going to bust straight through all of them without any warning. Next, then, let's take a look at the third way of climbing, and this is the one that can get you into trouble. This is the vertical speed mode. Simply select the vertical speed that you want to climb at, and there, off you go. Two and a half thousand feet per minute. Now, this comes with a big danger, because unlike managed climb or open climb, this mode doesn't manage or monitor your aircraft's energy and speed. It will target that climb rate that you have set no matter what. And if your thrust can't keep your speed up, well, the speed is just going to start bleeding off fast. The higher you get, it's going to struggle to maintain two and a half thousand feet per minute, and it will do its best to try and maintain that. And your speed is just going to bleed away. And what happens when we're at altitude and we have no speed? Yep, gravity comes into play. The aircraft increases its pitch and angle of attack to try and maintain that vertical speed you've set. The speed disappears and we're close to stalling. So why would you ever use VS to climb? Well, there are specific examples where it can be useful. Let's say you've just departed from an airport in highly congested airspace and air traffic control have just told you to climb maybe up 2,000 feet. If you used managed climb or open climb, well, you can start climbing rather quickly. The aircraft's got a lot of energy at this low altitude and you could be climbing at, say, 2,000 feet per minute, but you're only going to be climbing 2,000 feet anyway. And you are in danger in crowded airspace of triggering other aircraft's TCAS systems. So if you've only been told to climb a couple of thousand feet, then VS can be quite beneficial to say climb at maybe 700 feet per minute. So climbing at VS isn't dangerous, but it just needs monitoring all the way through. So they are the three main climb methods sorted. Well, what about coming back 
down. All right, so on to the descent. Well, first of all, we have managed descent. This mode is Airbus's equivalent of Boeing's VNAV path. It follows the vertical profile set in your flight plan. It respects every altitude and also the speed constraints, etc. in the star, the standard arrival route. So if air traffic control says to you descend via the star, this is the perfect mode. However, there is one tiny little gotcha worth looking out for. If, for whatever reason, you are high and above your profile, you've missed your top of descent point, when you engage this, well then the aircraft is going to panic and it will suddenly try to dive down, sometimes aggressively, to try and catch up with the profile path set in the flight computer. Not always fun for passengers or your vertical speed indicator. So there is another way to do it if you've been left high. And that is, yes, option number two, the open descent. Now, just like open climb, open descent ignores altitude constraints, and it will just descend you down towards your chosen FCU altitude at idle thrust, meaning that the speed and rate of the descent is dependent upon the target speed you have got set. So, for example, if you were high on the profile and you missed your top of descent, using open descent is a great way to start Start descending your aircraft and then you can just wind your speed up bit by bit to slowly increase your rate of descent to catch up with the vertical profile. And it's slightly less shocking than just going for managed descent and dive bombing down to catch up with the profile. Now descending using open descent and a high speed, there is a huge danger here, particularly if you are still in Mach mode. Because if you are in Mach mode and you are up high, you need to switch to indicated airspeed before you get low. Because the lower down you get, the air gets thicker, the Mach number stays the same, so your speed rises. This then makes it very easy to hit VMO and MMO, the maximum aircraft's operating speeds, without noticing. So yes, ideally get yourself into using knots rather than max speed as quickly as possible in this mode. Finally then, let's look at VS again, this time for the descent. Now this is perfect for fine tuning the end of your approach or in helping you to fly a continuous descent approach. And we've got videos here on the channel looking at using the VS mode for those final few miles. Now VS mode certainly isn't normally used right from the very top of your descent. However, in some places in the world, air traffic control will give you instructions such as descent to flight levels, 70 at 2000 feet per minute or greater very common in Germany so actually you do sometimes get told to use this mode because they are specific aircraft separation instructions ATC would like you to adhere to but remember VS is still not energy aware so if you set too high a rate you're going to accelerate and your speed is going to increase quickly so just as we said with climbing in VS mode you need to monitor your speed yourself. Now, just before we go, there is a fourth mode, both for climbing and descending, though this isn't really used ever for climbing, but there is the flight path angle FPA mode, which can also be used for your descent. To be honest, this isn't really used on a day-to-day -day basis. This is more used when flying RNAV approaches. And there are other videos on the channel explaining FPA mode and when it's used and how to use it. Finally then, the way to think about the FCU unit on the autopilot is you push control to the aircraft for managed modes and you pull control from the aircraft back to you for selected modes. And I hope you found this video useful because the next time you are now clear to climb or descend, you should know exactly which mode to use and why. So whether you're brand new to Airbus and you're coming across from a Boeing, for example, this is now hopefully where the Airbus starts to make sense. If you have enjoyed the video and it's been helpful to you, then please don't forget to leave a like and perhaps share it with some of your friends. If you do have any questions or comments, then please do leave those down below and I look forward to uh, reading those shortly. And of course, if you're new to the channel, then please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos and live stream flights. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Bye bye for now.